right, so next uh, I want to talk about thermal wells. Uh, if, if you um, have a thermal well and you need a replacement probe to go in it, the most important useful number is the, the bore depth. And this can be measured quite easily by just taking a piece of wire or even the probe that comes out of that well and just measuring this dimension that's shown here. And with this number, uh, the uh, your probe supplier can get you the right length. And it's just, it's just really the most useful number to have. I think one of the confusing things, and Bill go over it a little further here, is that um, different manufacturers have different ways of measuring the the immersion and the lag lengths, and uh, they kind of measure things a little bit differently. So if you can get that bore depth, um, then there's no confusion. That that's kind of a universal uh, number or universal measurement. So with with that, you can be sure that you're going to get the right sensor to go into that thermal well. Right. Some of the other dimensions that um, you know you'll see. You know, if you need to specify a replacement thermal well, uh, some of the ones that that you need to look at are the immersion length, and that's this U dimension. Um, so that's just the distance from the the end of the threads here down to the tip of the well, and then again the bore depth, uh, these diameters. Like this shows a tapered stem thermal well, so there's going to be two diameters. Uh, one kind of the major and one at the very tip section. Uh, there are some standards there that manufacturers have, but if you need something a little different, uh, that's usually available also. But because um, you want to make sure you get the same dimension well to go in so that you have the same performance out of it as you did with the original. And the other dimension is the lag extension, and that's usually indicated by the letter T and the instrument connection thread. Most of these are a half inch NPT. If it happens to be a metric, uh, it might be like an M20 size. Uh, but these are, you know, the, kind of the critical things to measure when you're trying to, to uh, specify the thermal well. And the other thing would be to note the diameter of the probe that came out of it. Uh, some wells, especially for thermocouple applications, may have a bore diameter that's 0.385. For most RTDs, they're, they're a quarter inch, so the bore diameter is going to be 0.26. Uh, and then if you know the, the material of the well, that's something else that you could um, pass along too. So the physical description, we want to look at the, the process connection, whether it's a threaded or a flanged well. And then the the style of the stem. This one happens to be stepped, or some call it a reduced tip. This is a tapered stem, where it goes from a larger diameter down to a smaller diameter. Uh, the, the reduced is typically specified when you need a little faster response time. And the tapered stem is a compromise between a straight stem and the stepped. So it, it gives you a little more strength, uh, but a little faster time response than if it were all um, a straight stem. The, the weld-in style thermal wells, are, you'll typically find those in some kind of a, a process tank, and it'll be welded in place. Uh, be a little difficult to replace one of those. We don't see that too often. Uh, the other style would be socket weld, and these are typically used in a pipeline situation. They get welded into a little ASA style um, socket that's welded to the pipe, and then the, this thermal weld drops in, and you, you weld around the outside edge of it right back, back in this area here. Some other kind of less common styles would be this uh, kind of this O-ring seal type thermal well. Uh, it goes sometimes by the trade name InGold. They were the company that developed it uh, several years ago. Uh, this typically drops into a little socket in a bioreactor vessel, and the 
And you can just kind of see the little orange O-ring there that does the sealing inside a little adapter that's welded onto the tank. And then this nut holds the uh, thermal well into the tank. Um, another type of sanitary well has a hygienic ferrule on it. This happens to have a straight stem on it. Another less common type of well, a lot of times used in, in uh, chemical applications is a van stone. And this one installs, it has a separate backing flange that covers the back of this and gets bolted over the top of it to uh, hold that in place and, and make the uh, seal to the process. And a final type here, this is a sanitary well that has a hygienic ferrule process connection, and it also has one for the instrument connection. And um, this would be important to, uh, to, to pass along. If you're trying to find a replacement temperature probe for it, it's going to have to have that hygienic ferrule on the temperature probe to be able to mate up with this style thermal well. This is a little bit of a hybrid type of thermal well where it actually uh, replaces part of the uh, uh, process piping system and then the thermal well is contained within this elbow. If we look at the cutaway here, we can see a temperature probe installed here and the thermal well is part of this uh, piece of pipe. And usually in, it protrudes down inside here, you know, two, three, maybe even four inches. And this one has uh, weld ends on it as, as its process connection. And you may also see these with a hygienic ferrule connection. It might be a compression union or some other other types, but certainly the, the weld in and the hygienic ferrule are the, the two most common types of process connections for this style well.